Nurse TV, brought to you by Hester. One day I came home and the phone was ringing and it was our doctor telling me to, um, to get down to his surgery and when the receptionist opened the door I just, just looked at Brian and I looked at the doctor and, and they both had tears in their eyes and, they, and Harry the doctor said, oh, it might have been Brian that said I've it's a brain tumour. She referred and she actually self-referred. People can refer to her agency through any means, through the doctors, um, families can refer. And in this case, Janine had referred and um, when I asked her how she knew about us, she said she'd gone in for a treatment to a hospital and the staff there recognised she was having difficulty in um, transferring Brian to the car and they felt that um, she could benefit from Eastern Palliative Care referral. I think there was still a bit of an ambivalence talking about what had gone on, talking about how difficult it had been for him to sell his panel beating business, how their life had changed dramatically. Really looking further down the track um, was still something that put them both in a very hard space at that stage, although they were prepared to talk about if the worst happens. And so I think at one level they were both really clear about what was going to go ahead with their lives. But at that point it was really looking at the immediate needs. And it was a real relief for me because it was actually physically very taxing looking after someone who's dying and whose um, motor coordination is failing them and who couldn't get to the toilet without help. Um, even though, And he was very, very stubborn. He, he, I woke up one night and he was trying to get to the toilet and, but his coordination was so poor that he couldn't turn around and he was stuck at the door. He would get stuck in places. But to have, and he accepted them. He was wonderful. Um, he, they had a way of making him feel quite relaxed. The most wonderful thing they did was organise um, nurses to come overnight sometimes and and uh, they would stay with him all night and I could sleep in my bed because I wasn't I was sleeping at that time at the foot of the hospital bed downstairs. Their whole world was in turmoil uh, they were just living through the unthinkable and Janine adapted to that um, experience just incredibly when nothing had prepared her for it, that she just took on the role and she learnt and grew as she um, went through the whole process. But she was very, very capable and, and we were always very affirming of what she brought into her, her part of the care. Paula was just amazing because she, she liked Brian, I knew she liked him. She, she, even the other day when I spoke to her, she said he was a larrikin and she liked that. And she liked it that he didn't give in to things. And I remember we were going to Emily's debutante ball and we had to get a taxi. She came to the Deb with us and made sure he was right. And then she went away. And then she came back a couple of hours later and took him home and put him to bed so that I could stay with the others and especially for Emily. So she was really special, and Brian. Brian really loved her too. He it was quite and it was quite amazing. I think they have an ability to just. I think if you let them just move into your life, and just be really part of your lives, and and they were encouraging. They would say to me, because I was really frightened. Um, I was terribly frightened um, of him dying in the home. What to expect? I didn't know how I would know he was dying. Um, I'd, I just didn't know how I would ever get through something as big as that. Um, and they would say to me, you can do this, Janine, you can do it. 
but at the same time they respected at that time we decided we, he would die in a hospital. At one stage they were definite that they didn't want it to happen at home and we arranged that he be admitted to a local hospital but um, when they went through that experience and he, Brian was hospitalised for 10 days, Janine actually recognised that her contribution to his individual care and that made it was a big turnaround for her but also an affirmation that she'd done a fantastic job which we'd actually also um, you know, backed her up on but I don't think she fully believed herself. So that was a great experience for her because she'd actually tried the alternative which she thought would be ideal and was quickly able to be flexible and revert that whole um, plan that she'd, um, you know, that she'd thought about at length before making the decision to put Brian into hospital. It was a Monday evening, Monday night, and he'd become really difficult to rouse over the last few days and had spoken very little. And it was a dull day, it was a dull May morning. And as the morning got lighter, I, I looked at Brian's hands and, and the ends of his fingernails were, were quite musky. And I knew that that was one of the signs that he was dying. And Dad suggested I call Paula and she came over within about half an hour, it was about quarter past eight, and I said, she said yes I was right, that he was dying. And we decided then that we would keep him home. Um, we knew that he was dying and he just looked so peaceful, we thought it would be a, a dreadful thing to shift him, so we talked about it and we said no, we'd leave him where he was. And Paula went, she said call me if you need me. And I remember looking out and watching the autumn leaves just swirling around and seeing cars go past and just wondering, I remember wondering, how can everything just keep going on? And, and my husband was dying and my children's father was dying. You know, how does it all keep going? <laughs> and I kind of knew it should. He just lay there very quietly and just doing this sort of non-breathing, I called it, where he would just take these deep breaths and then stop. And I just talked to him and talked to him and, and told him he had to hang on, he had to hang on, because Brad was coming home from Warrigal and he wouldn't be long and just hang in there. I was becoming really concerned that Brian was going to die before Brad got home. And about quarter to two I heard the gate and it was Brad and I said to Brian, he's home, it's okay. And Brad came in to the lounge, straight into the lounge room. And he sat down on the chair next to his dad and he took his dad's hand. And then Brian took one enormous breath and then he held it and I th and I just knew and I said to my dad quick get the other kids and dad said what's happening and I said he's dying and and then he called the kids and he took one more breath and that was it and I think he waited and he, he just knew it was just amazing <laughs> 